special meeting uh, was originally called to verify the uh, annual meeting and uh, budget referendum. Uh, that was delayed a week. So we will not do that tonight, but there's a few other items. Uh, we do need to go into a exec session uh, immediately. Uh, we do have a quorum and recognize a quorum and we'll be moving to exec session on the Google Meets uh, app. Um, I will call in, but if we have a motion and a second and a consensus, we'll, uh, we'll move on. I move that we go into executive session to discuss matters of personnel litigation and district uh, business. Second. And second by Pat, uh, without objection, all in favor, we're moving on to uh, exec session on Google Meets. So we'll, uh, we'll see everyone in just a few minutes. All right, Sean and uh, Trisha's back. We do have a few votes, one vote to do, I guess. So we'll, uh, a limited voting meeting. Here, Robin, I'll do so momentarily. Hey, Sean, who's that handsome dog behind you in the picture? <laughs> That's our dog, Sula, who is now 14 and still roaming the room. She's definitely not a guard dog. She is more named as a picture these plays. You have to have pretty stuff on the property, Sean, you know, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's okay to be pretty. <laughs> she is pretty. <laughs> The beautiful puppy. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'm trying to make sure Rob, you have all board members with us. I'm going to go through real quick. Yep. Missing Moira still. Uh, Chris Malcolm. And uh, again, Nicole may not be with uh, us. Uh, she has. Uh, she is part of our money. Eldred, I'm going to move you temporarily. Rob, I think we have a quorum. We do have a quorum. So we uh, we good, Sean. We'll go ahead and get started. Folks will join. All right. We are back from the next session. We have some items to get through uh, on the special voting meeting uh, on this Thursday uh, in June. Um, these are extraordinary uh, times in our calendar and our processes. Uh, we will likely have a, another special voting meeting next Thursday on the 18th. We will have a regular voting meeting, uh, board meeting on the 23rd on that Tuesday, starting at our regular time at six o'clock. Uh, but know that uh, next Thursday, we hope certainly to have another special voting meeting at 5.30 to verify the uh, what all the, the recent referendum and Board of Education votes. So we hope to do that a week from today. But for now, uh, we have a consent agenda to get through. Uh, there's a consideration of accounts and a few resolutions and um, and we should be able to just roll through it. Uh, yeah, there is a personnel too. report as well. So if I could have, we can have certainly a motion and second, and then we can address any questions. I'll move the consent agenda. Where Moved by Moira. Uh, second, I'll second. Eldred. Oh, okay. Eldred's got it, second by Eldred. Uh, and then there's a few, uh, few resolutions. The first is really uh, regarding the construction uh, management services for the high school roofing project. Um, it is facilities related, obviously, but this is for the room, uh, renovation and uh, putting on a new roof. Uh, the majority of the high school that was not recently added to, it's gonna be a two year project, 21 and 22, I believe. So that, that has gone through the, um, going through that uh, planning stages and this is really just that uh, agreement that Amanda will sign and we need to pass it so Amanda can sign it so we can get the roof fixed and removed.
removed and replaced. And then uh, there's the uh, personnel report. Uh, if there's any, I'm not sure whether we had any questions regarding that personnel report. Uh, Sean, go ahead. Rob, not about the personnel report, but um, to go back and um, just briefly give a quick update about some of the progress. I know you're a part of the group that meets in regards to our facilities bond project. And just uh, anything else you need to be aware of. I keep seeing, you know, South Hill's got its roof started. And um, and I know we're meeting with facilities committee on Tuesday. So right. for any community member who's listening, Tuesday, the, I don't even know what Tuesday would be at this point in time. It's going to be the 16th. The 16th. 16th, yeah, it's the 16th, right. Um, quick facilities update. We did have the OAC, OAC meeting, owner, architect, and construction manager meeting today. Sean, as you say, South Hill is uh, going well. They're ahead of schedule. Um, that's going to be wrapped up in, in good order. Um, some of the, pro you, there's obviously the progress at Ithaca High and the stadium and, um, and the new Welcome Center and re renovations in the old main office that will be um, converted. Uh, progress is ongoing. Some of the projects, uh, because kids have been out of school, They've been able to start early, earlier. Um, some projects that uh, we are hoping to get started earlier. Um, there's been delays in um, the supply chain, really. The, the world shut down for at least 60 days, and so we're uh, supply chain issues on a few items. We are going ahead on um, all the major uh, stage one projects, and certainly. We'll know more, and we'll talk about it on Tuesday, but we'll know more on some of the projects as we, uh, as we get through the summer. Will, will they fall into the, into the fall semester? And of course, that gets to reopening, uh, and that's a project, and that's a, uh, a lot of conversation that's uh, to come. Uh, facilities, obviously, is gonna be part of the reopening process, uh, procedures, and, uh, in all buildings and obviously cleaning routines, uh, what we're going to do with space, et cetera. So that's a, that's a part of the conversation along with uh, how it will all happen. But um, so that's a quick update. Thanks, Rob. Sure. Any other, um, you've seen the uh, opportunity to see the personnel report, anything else? Are we good to vote? Not hearing any questions. Uh, Tricia, if you could call the roll, and that would be great. And we'll vote on the consent agenda. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Rob Ainsley? I vote yes. Erin Croyle? Abstain. Sean Eversley Bradwell? Yes. Eldred Harris? Yes. Nicole is not is not here tonight, correct? That's correct. Okay. Moira Lang? Yes. Chris Malcolm? Yes. Ann Reichland? Yes. yes. Patricia Wazala? Yes. Yes. Very good. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Trisha, you've got the votes. Uh, that passes. And so, Dr. Brown, I believe we're um your your turn dr brown you've been on lots of zoom calls today and we've seen you in a variety of places and uh we're uh, we're happy to see you again dr brown the, the zoom marathon ends shortly i hope uh thank you for the opportunity mr ainsley uh i'm gonna uh turn my time over to amanda berber who as we wish to give the board and the community an update on the ever-changing board of education election and budget votes. Uh, last Friday, we thought one thing, Sunday afternoon, we learned something different. And things change often, and it's up to us to keep our community as informed as possible on the shifting nature of this unprecedented already, already unprecedented process. So Amanda, if you would unmute and share with the board and community where we are as of, I guess it's 6.53 p.m. on Tuesday evening, June the 11th. Sure. I so I'm just, 
That's correct. I just want to make sure that everybody can see my screen. I was sharing. Is that? Oh, thank you for the thumbs up, everyone. So um, I, I hope you don't mind. I'm not typically a, you know, slash and burn kind of person. But uh, if you want to consider sort of going from top to bottom as sort of the roadmap that along the way there was some construction or detours, right, the classic recalculating, um, if you have a GPS. Uh, you know, we initially started with a budget calendar out in October that was board approved. That meant that we were going to have a budget vote and um, election for the boards uh, of education spots on May 19th. That was going to be both in person and by, via absentee ballot. Um, obviously, there was a disaster emergency declared in March soon after that. Well, I say soon after that, but if you notice that occurred in March, um, I put in parentheses the dates when these executive orders actually came into effect. And uh, that one, the next one came in May. So um, we were, remember, we were tracking along to have a vote on May 19th. And then on May 1st, we received an executive order that no, in fact, we were not going to have that. We were going to do strictly absentee ballot only to be delivered by 5 p.m. on the 9th of June. That was May 1st. We got all of our uh, workforce together that uh, dealt with the budget vote. They were fantastic. We got this printed, we got things in the mail. We actually hit our timelines early. Um, we were able to get ballots in the hands of all the voters. We were able to publicize um, our budget documents online. Um, fast forward to June 7th, please notice the date. So voting was supposed to be to us by 5 p.m. on June 9th. On June 7th, school districts across New York State received another executive order stating that, yes, we will continue to have absentee ballot only. However, we get one more week for mail-in votes. So mail-in votes are still allowed to be received through June 16th at 5 p.m. We were not allowed to extend the courtesy to folks who wanted to hand deliver their ballots. This was in the executive order, not a district decision, but an executive order. So only through 5 p.m. June 9th, we were allowed to accept hand-delivered votes. So if you still have your ballot, please get that in the mail to us. Please do not come down to 400 Lake Street because by executive order, we will be unable to accept that ballot from you. Um, the post office has been excellent. We have been having frequent pickups throughout the day. And so those ballots are being handled, um, you know, through the um, election officials. Uh, and those, again, the location where those will be counted is Boynton Middle School. There will be video on that site, um, on the election officials, on ballot counting day, which will be at 5 p.m. on June 16th. One other thing that I think, oh, I don't know if there's any comments on this piece of the budget vote and the elections. Great. I have just one other slide uh, to show you. There has been questions about um, the first time around, uh, what if a budget is defeated? Um, due to the timeline change, it, the actual, if we were on the original timeline, the budget revote date would have been June 16th. We actually would have had a budget revote at that time. Now, because things have been pushed forward, uh, again in the executive order dated June 10th, school districts per the governor's executive order are allowed to have a budget revote. However, those will occur after the new fiscal year, July 9th. And we have yet to know if that will be absentee only or if it will be in person or some sort of combination, we're not quite sure yet. This is what we know at this point in time. In normal budget years and also through this executive order, districts have the ability to go to the voters for the first time. That's what we're, we're sort of in that first round of budget votes. If it is defeated, you're allowed to go to the second time to, but to the voters. On the third time, you don't get one. You actually have to go to what's called a contingency budget. Our contingency budget is made public in the budget documents that we provided to all voters and online. That contingency budget has some rules. They're very prescribed by New York State. You can only levy the taxes from the prior year. 
So actually the tax levy rate increase would be zero. We would actually be levying the amount of funds that we levied last year. Um, that means the tax rate would significantly go down um, to, to the public. And also we have to eliminate any costs that we determine that are contingency, specifically things like equipment purchases, things that are not in our contractual agreements um, to our, our bargain units and uh, contracts that are direct to the board and things that are considered to be sor sort of superflu superfluous to the work of the school district. So essentials we can still fund, but things that are contingency costs, we cannot. So that decreases the budget amount then to that new amount that you see there, which is about 2.5 million less than the budget that we're going out with right now. So again, just to summarize, budget, please get your ballots to us in the mail as soon as possible so that we can receive them by June 16th at 5 p.m. If the budget um, is passed, which is just a simple majority, 50% or more, then we move forward with the budget that we were proposed. We'll know about who, um, in terms of the board election, um, who the three seats uh, will, you know, will be taken by. Um, we will also know if it is defeated, we will be able to go out to a second vote. If that one is then defeated, we'll go to a contingency. Thank you so much, Amanda. You're very welcome. And Mr. Andrew, that's all I have for my superintendent uh, section, unless there are questions from the board. Any, uh, any questions for Amanda and Dr. Brown? Amanda, thanks, as always, for the patience, great work, and the every flexibility of our uh, processes. Uh, we, uh, we were one of the districts that had enough envelopes. Amanda, I believe. You were? Yeah. Uh, there we, were, we were and great. this was first announced that there was, uh, the word went out, there may not be enough envelopes in New York State to do what the governor directed us to do. Uh, we, were for, we, we were fortunate enough that we had enough. Uh, and the reason that it was the uh, vote was delayed a week is because some districts did not have enough envelopes to even get their uh, ballots out. So. Um, um, strange and unique times, um, and next year it will be calmer. It will be different. It will be different anyway. Um, who knows about calmer? But uh, so thanks, thanks Amanda, thanks Dr. Brown, and um, I believe the last item for our business of the evening is the academic calendar for the 2021 academic year, and I believe. Dr. Brown, that uh, there are folks, MOCs, there are others that wish us to uh, take a look at this and, and perhaps pass this tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, Mr. Ainsley. Uh, folks will say that we're in the midst of challenging times, somewhat referred to as the, the midst of a fire. Um, even in the midst of a fire, you need to be planning for the future. And the academic calendar is one of those such things we need to be used, we need to be planning for. Uh, we need to have an academic calendar approved now. And we do appreciate the patience from our families uh, BOCES, the business office, uh, we need to have this calendar approved uh, as soon as possible so that we can plan everything from payroll to uh, when we will be in session, hopefully in the fall and uh, during the breaks next year. So uh, yeah, we would love, we can always advise this. This board knows very well that we make revisions to the academic calendar when we need to, but I think it's, uh, we, it's a time, we at a time now where we need to put forth something to work with. And I may have lost count, uh, perhaps last year, I think we voted on it six times, but I, I may be, perhaps I uh, added one, or it had to be at least four times. So I would suggest that uh, we've, uh, we have had uh, feedback, uh, we've had comments, and we've had work uh, by um, students within the district within the last year regarding our calendar. Uh, making it more inclusive, changing language on it, uh, further delineating some of the religious holidays and, and highlights throughout the year. Um, so uh, glad to have comments and hopefully a motion. Um, this is 
At Waslu, I wanted to make a comment. Um, I do want people who sent in comments and suggestions about the school district. Pat, you're muted. Oh, uh, I said I just wanted people. Am I still muted? No, no. you're okay. Okay, it says I was muted. People who sent in comments and suggestions about uh, the calendar that I and my colleagues read all of those comments. Um, we are constrained by what we can do by New York State law, by the regional calendars. We can't approve specifically religious holidays on the grounds of there being religious holidays. Um, and we also have to negotiate with um, our ITA uh, as far as the parameters of the calendar. So it is a, it, it's a very complex balancing act. Um, it is not a perfect calendar. And we all know that we do not know what the fall will look like in a lot of ways. Um, so it is, it is an imperfect calendar. It is the best we can do right now, I think. And I would add that you know, I too read the comments and um, specifically some comments about changing the beginning or the ending of the school year. And that's where the regents have us constrained. The regents have, uh, they always set the date for regents exams and the regents exams in June of 2021, the, the dates have already been published and they're in the, they end somewhere in the week of June 21st. And so uh, we can't end school before the end of those exams. And similarly, it's my understanding that we cannot have students back in the buildings or have our calendar for students begin before Labor Day. And Labor Day this coming September is as late as it possibly can be, which is it's September 7th. And uh, so we can't be bringing students back in before that. And I'll also move to accept the calendar uh, in draft form uh, for 2021. And second. Second by Aldred and Moira, you moved it for adoption. Yeah, yeah it's for adoption. Correct, correct. Um, I'll add that for, for missing the uh, Lunar New Year as one of the holidays that should be recognized and realize that we're not going to be able to recognize every holiday, but there are a number of majority holidays that should be recognized on here. I believe it's February 12th of 2021. Um, not to make my colleagues angry, I'm struggling with our calendar. I'm struggling with how Judeo-Christian centric it actually is. It's an affirmation of forms of um, majority thinking. We have historically said that we are dictated in large part by our partners within our TST policies. Um, and I'm no longer willing to accept that as a reason for our calendar. Um, so I'm going to have a hard time accepting this, even while my colleagues are absolutely correct. Pat and Moira, thank you. We have some severe restrictions. By law, it's 180 days of instruction. By contracts, 184 days for most of our unions. Um, and yet and still, I think we have some flexibility to listen to our students to do some things in different ways and be leaders, not only in terms of cultural competency, um, but just in terms of having a much more dynamic and flexible calendar. So I appreciate what Board President Rob Ainsley said that we voted on our contract on our contract on our calendar multiple times last year. So there's still room for change and for flexibility. Uh, but I do think that we have an opportunity to be leaders in the state in terms of how we think about our calendar and which holidays we ensure students have access to and which holidays we do not ensure students have access to. And so um, I've been thinking a lot about um, what our calendar looks like and how it reflects back our level of cultural competency. So uh, 
I'll, I'll yield to my colleagues, but I'm, I'm just thinking deeply about what does this mean and what does it reflect? I want to add that last year we had students who actually came and gave us a, a specific uh, draft of an alternative calendar that reflected exactly what Sean's talking about. And I ultimately last year with that calendar, that spe specific alternative in mind, I voted against the calendar that was uh, ultimately passed for the very reasons that Sean is talking about. Um, and I'd in fact be willing to vote against this calendar in anticipation of a draft of something that addresses these concerns. Uh, hey everyone, this is Eldred. Uh, let me just, let me try and reiterate what my colleague Sean and Moore have said, but a little more uh, poign poignantly. Uh, the, the world has said enough. The world has said enough about doing things one way, about ignoring the voice of people who are on the outside. Um, the kids came to us peacefully. We've seen other um, efforts uh, begin peacefully. Uh, now we see where some of those efforts are. What I find the most disturbing about our calendar is that we know Ithaca is the most diverse community within our seven uh, school district BOCES. So we are being almost strong armed into being, into going against our values because of other school districts in our community. And I think it's important for us to send a message to the BOCES leader that we're just not gonna accept this anymore. And as far as New York state law goes, I've watched the governor change a law twice a day now for three months, <laughs> right? We can help shift this. We can help move the ball. I don't see how in this environment, anyone would be comfortable saying the status quo is acceptable. Um, could, could, I, could we ask for some feedback from our central administration on how viable, realistic um, it is to change this calendar at this point? Are there other factors that we should know about? Um, what, mm -hmm. what, what um, constituencies other than the teachers union would we have to look at? And um, should we just- Thank you from consideration. Yeah, I would uh, thank you for the question. And I wish I was as articulate as Sean Eldred Moira in your objections to the academic calendar that quite frankly represents the culture of our school district that we've all said is one that needs to change. It's not just our school district, it's the institution of K-12 education. So I serve at the pleasure of the board and I will work hard to meet this need uh, but we also must know as a team that we will be going up against a culture that's deeply embedded. So, and the kind of example, the kind of shifts that would need to take place to adjust this calendar would look like us moving away from, I won't even take on the most controversial one. Let's take on winter break. How about let's move away from winter break next year in Ithaca, New York, and see what kind of feedback we'd get. Or if we want to get controversial and, and listen even more feedback, let's move away from that winter break and that long of a winter break. Um, I'm even open to doing year-round schooling. But I, again, it's, I agree with the center that been shared, and it pains me to bring forth a recommendation that's not representative of the student voices that came and so eloquently shared that we needed to ship. But please know, they didn't, the draft they shared is, wasn't significantly different. That would allow for us to meet our contractual obligations and our seat time obligation for the state. So this is one of those ones where, you know, we're going to, I, we are going to spend the rest of our careers going up against a dominant culture. But I'm just giving you some examples of some of the things we're going to have to dismantle. And if we're prepared to do that, I'll bring you back a new calendar on Tuesday. And it will have the kind of shifts that will look like us representing all of the cultures that exist in our school community. And then I'm prepared for the conflict that would ensure. Doc, I think we're here to support you in that endeavor, at least to have some options. A colleague of mine really shifted my thinking today who said our continual performance of things as usual was exemplified, unfortunately, and my apologies for the trigger in the passing of 
George Floyd that even while he was a passing away, he called the officer sir. And so that continual notion of we need to do it because it's been done. I am open to thinking about what could be different and supporting you completely. And as a board taking on that for the community or at least engaging in the community, this is not a reflection of gonna solve racism in our community. I'm not saying that, but we know as you have said that school will not look the same when we get back hopefully to in-face learning or face-to-face -face learning. So before I can put my vote to this, I'd at least like to look at some additional options. And I know in talking with Bob earlier that it has implications for payroll. I know it has implications for families who are trying to maybe buy plane tickets, right? I know it has implications for childcare. I know that this is a, a, it's a deep issue that we're asking for, it's not simple. Um, but it's also a reflection of how we engage in our community as well. So I would hope that we could hold on to this to next week and hopefully not too much to our community and see if there is an option that's viable. And if there's not, then I would feel much better if that makes sense. And Sean, um, really Moira alluded to it with your first, your first words, uh, Moira. Well, according to the region schedule, we have to do X. And, uh, and uh, well, you know, the governor, but with a stroke of the pen, eliminated regions in the, in the spring, right? So it's, um, so it's right. And so we're, we're looking at a system um, where if you're looking at systems of oppression, uh, the, the region's exams are probably the, the best place to start. But uh, uh, so exactly, but I think, uh, but I'm Sean. I'm with you. I'm, you know, I'm more than happy to uh, let's take a look at this. The less we have to continually revote on it, uh, if we can take some a little bit more time, um, if uh, if we can, well, we can look at it on the 18th. But certainly, it would be the 23rd would be a good venue to uh, to have a deeper conversation about it. We talk more on Tuesdays rather than Thursdays, Dr. Frank. Yes, sir. I mean, you know, we talk about oppressive policies. We know this is one of those oppressive policies. And what I'm hearing is that you're giving me the license to go back and make an attempt to change it. And what I've done is share with you the kind of conflict that's going to, it's going to take place if we do so. And I'm all in uh, with your support and this kind of a public um, acknowledgement. If not us, if not us, then who? And thank you for this kind of direction. I'm happy to rebel against Albany and the uh, structures that I don't think work very well. I mean, we stated it over and over again um, that uh, we don't we don't look to Albany for solutions for Ithaca. So uh, we do have to leave, but I'm not sure we can take down the whole system. But um, you know, we can. And let me let me be very clear. I just right. let me be very clear because when I bring back something, it's going to be shocking. Um, it's more than just Albany. It's privilege. And I enjoy those privileges of being off for winter break. I have enjoyed those privileges of being living in central New York and having that February break. So what privilege are you prepared to give up to dismantle oppression? That's something that our admin team has been talking about now for an entire year. And we will be having that conversation next week when we bring forth uh, a revised academic calendar. And we'll see what privileges our community is prepared to give up. Um, to disrupt this oppressive system that we all can say is just that. Dr. Brown, I appreciate the way in which you phrased that. At the very least, we can have the conversation, right? And we can at least begin the conversation, but you're right, that there will be significant pushback for all a whole host of reasons, and we understand that. Myself as someone who enjoys a number of these privileges and these breaks as well. But I think it's time for at least a much more in, seriously engage what our students have asked and what we think may be possible to be a liberating space more than a, an oppressive space. So just for um, for processes, sir, uh, for process these, the, uh, there was a, a motion and a second. Uh, I am sensing that uh, we should table this? Do I make a motion that we table the um, vote on the academic calendar until the June 23rd meeting 
Bob, I hope that doesn't cause too much difficulty if we were to try to do something at that point in time. And if we have something to look at on June 18th, even better. But I make a motion that we table until June 23rd. It would need a second. Yep. I will second, second that. Second my pass. And Sean, we should have, a, we will have a regular vote on this motion, correct? So Trish, correct. we'll do the roll. If you, if you could, if you would. Uh, Trisha, and just to note, we're voting on the motion to table. Table, right. So the yep. 23rd. Rob Ainsley? Yes. Aaron Froyle? Yes. Sean Eversley Bradwell? Yes. Eldred Harris? Eldred? Uh, yes. Moira Lang? Yes. Chris Malcolm? Yes. yes. Anne Reichel? Yes. yes. Patricia Wazel? Yes. Uh, thanks, everyone. That's uh, we will table until the 23rd and look for information and perhaps more dialogue over the next uh, next 10 days, uh, next 10, 12 days, and uh, opportunity to take a look at um, an interesting subject. And it's always interesting to, um, to challenge uh, what we are told that we have to do. Uh, just because we've always done it, Sean, right? We always do it this way, right? So, uh, and I think we we certainly have seen that um, the, way, the way we've always done things uh, can be turned on its ear. So, um, so let's take a look and uh, we appreciate everyone's patience. Um, and thank you, Dr. Brown, and thank you everyone. Um, open now for any other business that we need to address on this Thursday evening before we uh, go on outside or go on and do other things from anyone. Are we good? Sean, you're good? Eldred, everybody, Chris, good to see you. Pat, thank you, thank you. Um, obviously, uh, good thoughts um, over the weekend into Tuesday and uh, Tricia and a great group are gonna be very busy after five o'clock on Tuesday counting. And, um, and, the, and the election um, officials will be there and will be very interesting what they, uh, what they count. And so this is unprecedented. And so uh, next week's gonna be interesting. So, uh, so we look forward to uh, the results of the budget. And uh, we'll see everybody soon. Um, without objection, we are adjourned. Thanks everybody.